Hi from my platform Linda's TV show. If it is your first time, you are welcome. Please, after watching this video, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. It is very, very important because it will enable you to know when I upload a new video. Here we upload videos on daily basis as it is happening. We are bringing it live and direct, undirected to you. After watching, you are free to criticize. You are free to say your opinion, but let us say it constructively myself linda will be standing here watching this video together with you from the beginning to the end then we'll go to the comment section i appreciate you all my loving subscribers followers those who comment and share this video as we watch the video right now I have had probably a country without a war if wise counsel had prevailed all Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon, the handsome 12 man who was a bachelor before he took over the headship of this country and only married Victoria after he became head of state, they disagreed and said they were going to carry out a police action from the Unsuka Axis. That was a piece of historical mistake. That mistake was to turn into a three-year bloody civil war that took the lives, some people say, of over three million Biafrans. And that was, that was after the failure of the Aburi Accord, when General Ankara had hosted Gowon and Ujuku in Ghana to find a way as to how to avoid war. By January 15, 1970, the Biafrans decided to surrender to the Nigerian side through General Philip F. Young, who surrendered to General Olusegun Obasanjo, the man who had taken over control of the third marine commando from from Adekunle, Benjamin Adekunle. Then the three hours were promulgated. Three hours. Reconstruction, rehabilitation, and reconciliation. I've always asked the question, because driving here, if you drive to Enugu State from Onicha, pass three, passing through Oba, Orefite, Okija, Ihiala, Uli, Mbudi, Awomama, Oweri. You will see more roadblocks that you can find in the northern part of Nigeria, where Boko Haram and armed banditry reign supreme. So I find these people more in a state of mental and physical siege. So again, I ask the question, what has the Igbo man done? Have they reconciled one of the three hours? Have they been rehabilitated one of the three hours? Have they been reconstructed one of the three hours? I do not know. I do not know whether you know. I have decided to say that whenever we talk about the indivisibility of Nigeria, we must be careful not to overstretch it and overstretch it. The former USSR once thought so. Today, they have broken up into 15 independent states. Some of them are Ukraine, Ukraine. Currently at war with Russia, you, Russia itself, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, the one we call the three Bal Baltic states, Estonia, Armenia, Kingston, Moldova, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. They broke up. Yugoslavia was once one. 
he broke up into six states. India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh used to be one country. Today they are separate. Ask Sudan, which some few years ago broke into Southern Sudan and Sudan. At this moment, as we are talking, we are battling to bring back our people trapped in that Sudan in a fratricidal war between the same people of the same country. And our own man, the owner of Air Peace, has decided to use his aircraft and is doing that precisely, Onyema, to lift Nigerians trapped in that country. Alan Onyema, Onyema, God bless you. I didn't hear people say we will not go with air peace. The owner is an evil man. Chimanda Ngozi Adichie, Dr. Ngozi Okoje Iwela, the first female and, and, and black manager, I mean, uh, J Director General of the World Trade Organization, the WTO, and former managing director, World Bank Operations. They are doing Nigerians proud and Nigeria proud. I haven't ha heard anybody say we don't want to take the glory because they are Igbos. JJ Okocha, Dan Amokache, Kanu Mwanko, Mikel Obi Uche, Okechuku Vincent Enyema, Christian Chuku Emmanuel Okala, Onyekachi Abam, Francis Uzo, and Harry Mosu, and many others. They burnt the local and international fields, doing Nigeria and Nigerians proud. I didn't hear anybody say, we didn't want the glory because they are Igbos. Chioma Ajua, in 1996, to the Olympic gold medal at the Atlanta Olympics. Emmanuel Ifrajuna, the man who was also involved in the 1966 military purge, was the first black African to win a gold medal in an international competition, the 1954 Vancouver Olympics. Michael Okpala, alias Power Mike. Richard Ihetu, alias Dick Tiger, former world boxing weight champion. Olaudo Equiano, the man who wrote many treatises that led to the abolition of the 500 year old slave trade. Chino Achebe, the man whose novel Things Fall Apart has been transcribed or tra into more than 500 languages and is now rated as one of the 12 novels considered to be the greatest book ever written by Encyclopedia Britannica. They were all of Igbo extraction. I didn't hear anyone say we should not bask in the glory because they are Igbos. Philip Emeagole is from Onitsha, computer scientist whose seminar was brought about internet revolution and described by CNN as the father of internet. Professor Bath Naji, who pioneered robotic engineering. Professor Chike Obi, world acclaimed mathematician. Professor Gabriel Oyibo, the man who blazed aircraft design and aerodynamics and aeroelasticity. Professor Benoit Bouze, the first African to have LED Doctor of Laws by thesis. Professor Ben Enwongu, the great sculptor. Chief Sir Louis Odumebu Ojuku, the father of Ikemba reputed to be the first Nigerian and West African billionaire. 
they were Igbos. I didn't hear anyone speak about Igbophobia or Igboism. Do you know that the present president of Liberia, Edward James Roye, is said to be an Igbo man? Do you know that the present president of Gabon, Ali Bongo Ondiba, is said to be of Igbo descent and that he was taken away during the civil war? So, why then the typification and profiling of the Igbos? I was at the Supreme Court yesterday to defend an Igbo son. <laughs> Nam Dikano, yes, he founded IPO, Indigenous People of Biafra, in 2012. His goal is to read the Constitution and clear to give respect to the Igbos, to put them in a respectable position. Then if you don't want to respect us or give us our, then let us separate peacefully. That's all. I pop, we saw them, beret wearing, whistle blowing, marching on the streets. They were not violent. I saw them. I followed their tracks. Then, it took Operation Python by the Nigerian army between 14th and 17th of September 2017 to descend on his home, ancestral home, at Afara Ibeko, Afara Uku Ibeko, and Umuahi at the state. They almost killed him. He escaped by the teeth. He was then enjoying bail, but unprovoked, he was to be killed. He escaped. His first port of call was Israel, and he quickly reported and swore to an affidavit before he went to London. The federal government said he jumped bail. No sas, no man. Inland the Kanu did not jump bail. He escaped to save his life. He would have been killed. So the self-determination bid by IPOP, for your information, for those who had always harbored the thought that it is an illegality or an unconstitutionality, it is not true. Self-determination is recognized by articles, Article 20 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, Articles 10, 11, and 12 and 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. Articles 1 and 22 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, 1976. Articles 3 and 4 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, 2007. So Nnamdi Kanu was brought back. He was abducted in Kenya blindfolded, tortured, and forcibly brought back on the 27th of June, 2021, after he was uh, kidnapped on the 19th of June. They charged him to court. I went to court. He was charged with 15 counts. I went to the Federal High Court and argued with a preliminary objection that the case had no legs to stand on, that the charges were bad and could not fly legally. The Federal High Court agreed with me and struck out eight of the 15 counts, remaining seven. I was dissatisfied. I took the battle to the Court of Appeal, Abuja Division, and the Court of Appeal agree with me and dismiss the remaining seven counts. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. The Court of Appeal made a pronouncement, said now the Kanu should be released and should never again be detained 
and should never again be prosecuted on the same charges over which he was kidnapped and forcibly renditioned back to Nigeria. A whole federal government, rather than protect your citizens, your individual citizens, their fundamental rights, which America will do. America will go to any country to go and take one of their citizens. The whole federal government filed a motion on notice to stay execution, which was granted by the State Court of Appeal. The federal government was staying execution of the liberty of its own citizen. So we were at the Supreme Court yesterday to say, this is wrong. Set this man free. Now the canon is sick, he's not well. In the DSS Gulag, they are increasing his potassium level. He has ear pain. And the DSS doctor has diagnosed that he needs an operation. But they will not allow him independent opinion from his own doctor. This has been going on. And because of that, in order for him not to die, we have told the Supreme Court to do the needful. The case has been adjourned to the 11th of May. But here is calling on President Buhari, please sir, on my bended knees, on my bended knees, you can order the release of Nabi Kanu today. You can do it through the Attorney General of the Federation who has the powers to enter a knowledge prosecute, discontinuance of the cases. After all, there is even no case now. He's just being held illegally. Let him go. Let my people go. You don't have to wait for the Supreme Court decision. You don't have to wait to go on May 29. Let Imam Dikanu go. So what do we do to bring about this handshake so as not to take too much of your time because there are other activities we should get it right first leadership like the Asian Tigers because Professor Chino Achebe told us in his epic the trouble with Nigeria said the trouble with Nigeria is simply and squarely a failure of leadership the Nigerian problem is the unwillingness or inability of its leaders to rise to the responsibility, to the challenge of personal example, which are the hallmark of true leadership. I want to add the problem of followership, complex ethno-religious composition that divide us, high power distance culture, corruption, which is on steroids, weak institutions and the fact that we have a state captured by elite buccaneers of power we do not practice democracy i have said a, be a beautiful concept defined on the 19th of november 1863 by american president abraham lincoln we don't as government of the people, for the people, and by the people. I have coined and have added to our political lexicons what we practice. Many crises that we practice, all of them devoid of demo, democracy. We practice electionocracy, four-year interval rituals, by which we go and select, or so-called elect our leaders. We practice judocracy a government where the politicians fight in fact the nigerian courts are the busiest in the world on election petitions the politicians mess up our democracy they fight they go to the court and the court incubates midwives and give birth to your governor for you or to your president we practice executocracy a system of government where the executive is so powerful and so despotic and autocratic that it behaves more like Louis XIV of France 
that will stand in front of parliament imperiously in 1655 to declare l'etat c'est moi i am the state we practice legislatocracy a system which has been exemplified by the eight by the ninth national assembly of yes 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 mr president like the adama lizard every bill every request yes sir mr president and when a person comes to be screened for an important national position say oh we know you michael Sekome. we don't need to screen you take a bow i so i call them mr take a bow national assembly that's what we also practice legislatocracy so i put here some of the things we should do to have this handshake not just across the niger but also across the Benue, imitating the asian tigers investment in skills advancement in technology engagement of specialized agencies establishment of pilot projects involvement of international agencies adaptation of foreign imported technology massive investment in infrastructure manufacturing proper and prudent management of our natural resources disciplined relatively cheap educated and skilled workforce targeting high literacy level formulating and implementing deliberate government policies strengthening the developments of agriculture encouraging industrial development human capital development developing small and medium scale enterprises maintenance of political social as well as macro economic stability creating a sound financial system leadership that prioritizes citizens welfare encouraging a savings culture and developing export oriented industries to produce having said that i decided to say having faith on all indices on all our political and constitutional experiments and experimentations the 1922 clifford constitution the 1946 arthur richards constitution the 1951 McPherson Constitution, the 1954 Littleton Constitution, the 1960 Independence Constitution, the 1963 Republican Constitution, the 1979 Obasanjo Constitution, the 1989 Unused IBB Constitution, the 1999 Constitution, which we have already amended four times, imposed on Nigeria by General Abdusalam Abubakar government, which is actually a schedule attached to decree number 24 of 1999 we have fed on all this what do we need to go forward we need a brand new constitution make no mistake about that it is not the type of constitution that you are going to amend under section 9 of the constitution because you cannot amend a bad product amendment plus alteration multiplied by amendment added to amendment can never cure the present constitution of its original sin which is that it does not represent the best certificate of nigeria which a constitution must be a constitution must be autochthonous homegrown indigenous legitimate and recognized by the people we do not have such a constitution we have a militarily imposed constitution so when the present constitution tells us we the people of nigeria do hereby make and give to ourselves the following constitution it's a lie the constitution tells a lie by itself and in itself we need a good a, a brand new constitution it's like saying like naman the leper we need to dip ourselves into our socio-economic and political river Jordan to cleanse ourselves of our leprosy. We can't go on like this. You cannot cure an ailment so serious like leprosy with medicine meant for eczema. It will not go away. Your leprosy will become till your fingers are chopped up. Nigeria is a country on auto pilot on a journey to new destination 
that a new constitution had been gotten before? Yes, I can tell you that. Iraq, in 2005, Kenya, in 2010, Eritrea, in 1994, South Africa, in 1994, 93, 93, 94, Iran, in 1979, after the Ayatollah Khomeini revolution, Bangladesh, 1991, Morocco, 2011, Egypt, 2012, Tunisia, 2002, are the American experience which we should all emulate to go forward. They met between May 14 and September 17, 1786. They were already a great nation, but they wanted a more perfect union. So they met in Philadelphia and decided to have a more perfect union. That was where they made their constitution, signed by 39 out of the 55 attendees. It was that constitution that threw up the great federalists, people like George Washington, after whom the capital, Washington DC, is named. People like Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, people like Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, they are called the federalists. They agreed on republicanism, they agreed on federalism, they agreed on presidentialism, they agreed on, on the principles or division or separation of power, a concept earlier in 1748 popularized by Baron de Montesque, a great French philosopher, and they decided we need to be together. Then they have what you call judicial review. Today, we have a unitary constitution. It is not federalist. 67 items on the exclusive legislative list. What is the federal government's business with marriage? Marriage Act. Do you know that your relationship between you and your wife is governed by the Marriage Act, federal government? Matters that should even be left to local governments, not even states. They license your car, your car, your vehicle. What's your business? So, I believe that we need in building our blocks to recognize the burdens of long-term violence and shun them and receive plans from locals, conflict transformation, insider and outsider links, dealing with spoilers, identifying obstacles to strategic peace, building efforts, and sit and evaluate how we live together, ensure everyone lives in safety, ensure that everyone is equal before the law, and that there are no special secret cows, ensure that everyone has fair and equal access to the basic needs of life, ensure the principles of federal character is respected, bringing different groups together, engaging in various forms of diplomacy to strengthen our bonds for the things that unite us are more than the things that divide us, to make ourselves a Dolly Parton's coat of many colors, improve our justice delivery system, working to improve community development, working together with businesses and trades to create sustainable jobs, improving infrastructure, creating free and inclusive media, making development programs in conflict areas. And at the risk of being tautologous, we must have purposeful and deliberate leadership. We must respect human rights and the rule of law. Let us stop burning bridges. And let me make it clear. The Igbos can be president. This has become a national question that must be answered. He will not be an Igbo president. No. I'm saying a person of Igbo extraction. Can and should also be president of Nigeria. Make no mistake about it. If we do not have tolerance, respect for each other, facilitating these issues using our present 
maybe our present uh, template that we, at least we have for now, the NYC, the National Peace Committee, the National Human Rights Commission, the Legal Aid Scheme, National Council for Women's Society, National Youth Council, Nigerian Council of Interreligious Affairs, and we do not have equity, fairness, and social justice. We are in trouble. Make no mistake about that. And if you can no longer live together, rather than kill yourselves, if a man and a woman, I'm not advocating for that. I'm always saying in the extreme of moments, if a man and a woman can no longer live together, let them sit down and re renegotiate their union. Okay, when you were my girlfriend, this is how we were going. Yes, you, when you were my boyfriend, this is how we were going. What is it? Thank you so much for sticking to this video to the end. Like I said before, now it's time for us to go to the comment section to air our mind and our opinion. Say what you think about this video and this platform. Do it constructively. Share this video. Like, subscribe. And also continue to watch Linda's TV show because this is the home of news. Until I see you again in my next video, remain blessed. For now, I would say bye-bye.